When Charlene Wallace was first diagnosed with cancer, her doctor recommended she participate in a clinical trial, testing a promising new cancer therapy. Initially, I was apprehensive, thinking clinical trial, no, don't try anything on me. Eventually, she saw the wisdom in at least considering joining the trial. But before she actually took part, she needed to deal with an awful part of the past. When I think about clinical trials, the first thing that comes to mind is the Tuskegee study. Tuskegee was a U.S. government syphilis study from the 1930s until 1972. Nearly 400 African American men took part. But to measure its effects over time, the men were never told they had the disease, and its symptoms were never treated. Decades later, when the study was revealed, 28 men had died. And I think about what was done during that time, how people were treated, and I um, think how unfortunate it was, and how unfortunate that it's still embedded within the African American community. There are cultural barriers. Uh, the African American community remembers Tuskegee. Ellen Siegel works to educate people about the concept of clinical trials. The first thing that people have to understand is that before a patient ever gets enrolled in a clinical trial or a clinical trial gets approved, there are many layers of approval. There are many layers. Researchers say the days of a Tuskegee-like debacle are gone forever. Today, clinical trials designed to test therapies and treatments that have shown promise in the laboratory are scrutinized for patient safety and protection issues long before the actual trial gets underway. Experts say this close monitoring is often missing when patients are treated with standard therapies. When you're treated off a clinical trial, nobody collects the data. Nobody knows how many people respond. Nobody knows how many people had side effects. Nobody knows anything uh, other than that one doctor. Participating in a clinical trial is voluntary, but participation rates are so low that many experts believe patients aren't getting the proper information about which clinical trials may be available and how they might benefit from them. I guess my concern is that, um, because I, I'm one who believes that clinical trials represents the cutting edge of medicine, uh, and because only 3% of patients go on clinical trials, I, I have questions about whether um, all the options are, or the options are really presented uh, to the patients. Dr. Atkins recalls how AIDS patients came out in droves for clinical trials. That, he says, led to a dramatic progress with treatment. They knew that that was going to be the cutting edge. They knew that's where the new drugs were. Charlene decided to join that clinical trial and today considers herself a clinical trial success story. It's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. It's a feeling of survivalship. Uh, it's a feeling of uh, empowering myself, empowering others to let people know that, hey, you know, this is a battle we can absolutely win. Researchers hope that as the number of volunteers increases, more new discoveries to fight cancer will follow.